Hello and welcome to the Mega Bed Fan channel. As you can see, we're still in the basement, so as it's very hot outside, um, we decided to, to come down here and stay cool and at the same time uh, probably do something useful because when it's really hot, you don't really want to do much. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd take advantage of showing you a few brochures for the multi truck, some sales brochures, and that sort of thing. So, first of all, thank you so much to Simon and Janet for sending me these two, bro two brochures, two manuals. That's the, the Phase 2 um, Mega Multi Truck. That's the Phase 1 manual. I've got a Phase 2, so this one is going to be more useful. But it's also interesting to look at uh, the bits to do with the Phase 1. Uh, and I've got some sales brochures to show you as well. So, we'll crack on. So I think we'll look at the, the sales brochures first of all. I've got Emma here helping me film so I can use both my hands. And uh, hopefully her arms won't ache too much after this. But uh, this is the, the brochure for the Phase 2. But it's got a strange body attachment for um, getting rid of garden waste basically. The idea is it's, I'll put that towards the light so I can see it. Yeah, because... Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of practice, isn't it? Um, so it's just for destroying um, garden waste and turn it into sawdust. So you've got to tip up thing and whatever. So it's not quite the same as as my van, but uh, you know, it's the same, uh, well, same chassis, same cab. It's just the body's different. But the strange thing here is you've got uh, charge utile, which is basically uh, what it can carry. Um, so maximum on maximum on the back axle, uh, 690. I'm not sure why it says 690 because in what I've seen from my van, it's 195 kilos. So I keep seeing different figures for the, you know, for the weight that can be carried. But um, yeah, so that's the, the brochure for the phase, sorry, phase two this is the phase one brochure so you've got all the different uh, versions down here okay so you've got a standard wheelbase um, you've got a short wheelbase version as well but uh, it isn't in this picture I think it's on the inside um, you've got the diesel versions and the electric versions okay so and we open it up and it's basically showing all of their achievements uh, at AXAM Mega. Um, they'll quite achieve quite a lot because here you've got uh, the um, Mega Track. Um, no, is that the Mega Track? Yes, that's the Mega Track there. So you've got the Mega Track, but you've also got uh, the um, da -da -da, trophy now, Josh, da -da, Dakar, I see, I thought it was a Dakar. So you've got the Dakar rally cars, and the, well, that's a Dakar rally car, that isn't, but they also had um, one for racing on snow. Um, but uh, you know, they, they did a lot of stuff, Mega or Aixam, as was, but I don't think the, the Mega track caught on. It's a 4x4 four four sports car. I mean, it looks the part, but, uh, yeah. But it's strange that they use the name Mega to to give to their trucks after producing a sports car. So if we open this up, and we just uh, bring it in over here. Thanks, Emma. So there you've got the... That's the short weight wheelbase version. I've seen one of those before. Um, you don't tend to see many phase ones about really. So you've got uh, the, the tip up truck, um, the van, you've got a van with the sliding door on the side, um, and then all these special use ones for sort of doing you know, sort of coffee, coffee stalls, and so on. Um, we've got uh, one here even with a, 
a bash, a canopy over the top, a bash in French. And this one looks quite cool. It's probably all coming out a bit blurred, but I uh, apologise in advance. But they reckon that they can use all of that as the load area. I'm not so keen on having the idea of this on the top here, but I have seen a caravan, believe it or not, on the chassis before with steps up to the door because obviously with, uh, with it being quite high up um, you know you can't really get in at ground level because normally with the the van part comes right down to here so it's a bit like uh, a Citroen H type you can just walk straight in I mean if you look at the this picture here if I can get rid of the reflection you see you can lay straight in from the floor level which is excellent and that's the same thing on my van so so that's the the two sales brooches or oh, you got the the Kubota it says 3.5 litres there um that's 400 cc uh Japanese Kubota engine and you've got the electric motor as well but this was on the phase one um not much changed on the phase two and on the the D truck um I think the, they have the same motor, engine, combination, whatever. So just have a quick look at the um, the manuals. So that's the, the manual for the uh, Phase 1, which, to be honest with you, a lot of the, the drawings uh, are the same. The only differences are the doors, the door locks, the door cards and uh, the fact the engine is under the seats. Uh, I'm glad I didn't get a phase one. I nearly got a phase one, actually. Um, in fact, we, we planned to go all the way up to Rouen to go and look at uh, Rouen in northern France, to go and look at uh, a phase one, which was it looked very nice, but I suddenly realised that the driving position isn't exactly brilliant because you are sort of... I mean, if you look at the the brochure here, um, I don't think there's any interior shots of cabs, unfortunately. But you can imagine that just here, I'll just bring your camera over here. Thanks, Emma. So you can imagine that you get in, where do you put your feet? Because you've got the wheel arch intrusion, and the pedals are in a very small space, basically in between the, the wheel arch and the dashboard because the dashboard's got a centre console on it so this is the, the phase two which is mine and this is for me this is like gold dust i mean it's it's excellent and i can't i can't thank simon and janet enough for sending me these because this is this is something that's really useful because you've got a, a paragraph here about the um it's basically about the display on the dashboard and it's been puzzling me for a while because You've got, um, in this paragraph here, explains the, the service intervals. Now, the service intervals are quite close together. Uh, it says here, uh, 1,000 kilometres or one year, 5,000 kilometres or one year. But, it, <laughs> you know, you can imagine 1,000 kilometres, okay, um, is a service interval. Um, it's a bit short, and to be honest with you, I'm, I don't think I'm going to keep to, to a short service interval. But of course, because I'm not sort of like going to a dealer to get anything done, uh, I haven't quite figured out how to switch off. You've got like a spanner and it tells you how many kilometres you need um, before, well, how many kilometres, sorry, before doing a service, which is, it's a bit annoying, you know, because you can't really shut it off. I'm sure there's a way of shutting it off, but I think that the the dealer does that when they do a service. And here, another puzzle was uh, the the fact that you got the all the fuse box details. Now, on on my van, the fuse box is actually hanging from the dashboard, and um, somehow we've managed to help my brother-in-law some time ago. He managed to decipher where the fuses go in the in the blocks. So that's going to be a future video. I need to do something about uh, about that. So at the same time as buying these on the Bon Coin, uh, I also bought something else. Nothing to do with um, mega multi trucks, but it's the same sort of 
glass because these are Son Permi as well. So here we have the Mia, which is one of those. And you don't see many of them on the roads because they made, I don't know how many of them made, but they made, didn't make very many of them. And then they went out of business. So there you go, all the different versions. Uh, you got a, a van version, uh, a long wheelbase sort of ta car and taxi version. And there you've got a short wheelbase version, but you've got different seats as well, different seat variations. You, you've got a centre driving position anyway, but then you can have two single seats, three single seats, or a van. So it's rather a nice looking thing. And it's a shame I didn't make many of them. So there you go, a few brochures, manuals and so on. My very small collection for my van. And uh, yeah, excellent stuff. So, thanks for watching. That brief uh, description of, well, variations and so on. And various little uh, foibles that I find on um, Mega Bread Van. Uh, hopefully I'll learn a lot more from this Phase 2 brochure because uh, um, there's a lot of things that I, I don't know about my van really, especially on the electric side because there appeared to be a, a slight problem with those. Um, like, for example, my horn isn't working. Uh, no double entendre intended. And uh, there's also a problem with the, the warning beep for when I leave the headlights on and open the driver's side door. So that doesn't work either. It could be just the fact there's a fuse that's, that's blown for each, or it could be that water's got onto, onto the horn, because uh, it's right on the edge of the chassis near the front wheel, so um, it wouldn't surprise me. So, yeah, you learn every day. So thanks for watching, and take care of yourselves. See you again. Bye. <laughs>